Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to practice recalling the questions on ovarian borderline cancer. On every slide, you will be given a question and then you will be given 10 to 15 seconds to answer the question. After 15 seconds, the bell will ring and the answer will be shown to you. It is recommended that you answer the question verbally or you can keep a piece of paper with you and just write bulleted points of the answer or you can record all your answers so that you can play back and confirm the correctness of your response. Please give feedback if this method of revision is helpful to you. Here, I would also like to remind you to please subscribe to this channel so that we can carry on with this work of helping our postgraduate trainees. So your first question is, what is the borderline ovarian tumor and what are the tumor subtypes? Your answer time starts now. Okay, so the answer is that borderline ovarian tumors are neither malignant nor are they totally benign. They have a specific histological characteristic as defined by FIGO and the World Health Organization. The two major histologic subtypes are serous and mucinous, with serous being more common. The mucinous tumors are larger, multilocular cysts with smooth surfaces and on histological examination, the epithelial layer is characterized by stratification of two to three layers and nuclear atypia, enlarged nuclei, and mitotic figures are also observed. Approximately 25% of borderline tumors have cell proliferations on the outer surface of the lesion with no evidence of growth from the inner surface. Of these, approximately 90% develop peritoneal implants. Peritoneal implants are biopsied and show similar changes. So if you were able to answer even the first two points in this, in this question, I think that is good enough. But if you can answer the last two as well, that would be excellent. Let's move on to the next question. What is the prevalence of borderline ovarian cancer and what is the etiology? So your answer time starts now. So the answer is, Worldwide, the borderline tumors will be less than 1% of all cases of ovarian cancer. The etiology of this borderline ovarian cancer remains unclear. This is due to the small number of cases and the lack of randomized controlled studies. So far, we know there may be some association with oral contraceptive use, age at first pregnancy and delivery, menstrual history and smoking history, family history of ovarian cancer. So let's move on now to the next question. What are the signs and symptoms of borderline ovarian cancer? Your answer time starts now. So there may be no symptoms just as in, cyst, in the ovarian cyst. But approximately 23% of patients will present with symptoms of abdominal pain, increasing girth or abdominal distension and abdominal mass. 
The diagnosis of borderline ovarian cancer is based on histopathology and surgical staging. From the available data, there is no accurate way to predict the final pathology of ovarian tumors from either clinical, laboratory, or imaging studies alone. We move on to the next question. What investigations will you do in a case of suspected ovarian cancer or ovarian borderline cancer? The time starts now. So patients will have all the investigations for preoperative assessment. For example, if they are hypertensive, diabetic, diabetic or hypothyroid, then the investigations have to be relevant to those conditions as well as the basic preoperative assessment. Cancer antigen 125 is not shown to aid in the diagnosis or follow-up care of patients with borderline tumors. Color Doppler ultrasonography is positive in 90% ovarian tumors. Pelvic ultrasound is done as a routine in all cases to identify the pelvic pathology. CT scanning should be considered preoperatively to identify possible metastasis foci. Move on to the How will you plan the treatment for borderline ovarian cancer? <laughs> the time starts now. Surgery is often curative for patients with confirmed stage 1 disease. If the tumor is unilateral and adjacent tissue is normal, then unilateral cystectomy may be performed. However, an inspection of the capsule for signs of rupture should be performed before resection. If no normal adjacent tissue is present, then oophorectomy or salpingo-oophorectomy should be performed. If the other ovary is normal looking, then a biopsy should not be performed on the adjacent ovary because of the risk of ovarian failure if fertility is an issue. Exploration of the peritoneum should be extensive. Implants should be removed and sent for histopathology. What is the role of chemotherapy in borderline ovarian cancer treatment? Your answer time starts now. So even though chemotherapy is administered to such patients, especially when the borderline pathology is associated with spread, but there is no evidence to confirm the role. How do we stage borderline ovarian cancer? Your answer time starts now. Staging of borderline ovarian tumors is considered according to the FIGO classification of ovarian cancer. It is of pro significant prognostic value and is performed surgically. Current staging of, of guidelines will involve removal of the ovarian cyst and also include biopsy specimens of the pelvic peritoneum, including cul-de-sac, pelvic wall, bladder peritoneum, abdominal peritoneum, including paracolic cutters, diaphragmatic surfaces, momentum, intestinal serosa, mesentery, and retroperitoneal lymph nodes. What is the prognosis of borderline ovarian cancer?
So the answer is the prognosis for borderline ovarian cancer is usually excellent. These women have a 60% chance of having stage 1 disease when diagnosed. Post-operative treatment for any stage is controversial. Therefore, recommending re-operation for surgical staging alone is difficult. Only the age at diagnosis and the presence of invasive implants are shown to influence prognosis. Move on to the next question. What is the recurrence and survival rates of borderline ovarian cancer? The answer is the only age of diagnosis and the presence of invasive implants are shown to influence prognosis. Patients with stage 1 disease confirmed by comprehensive staging has a recurrence rate of approximately 15%. The 5-year survival rate for such patient approaches 100%. In patients with stage 2 or stage 4 disease, the prognosis is different. An increased stage is associated with a worse prognosis. Death was noted only when invasive carcinoma was noted in the recurrence. How does borderline ovarian cancer influence or affect the fertility of the patient? Borderline ovarian tumors have an excellent prognosis. Therefore, we don't need to do hysterectomy and contralateral oophorectomy if the ovary appears normal and the patient wishes to preserve her fertility. If in case the patient is, is uh, past childbearing or if she is an older patient, then you can do the hysterectomy in this patient. In those patients, who, uh, in whom the uterus was spared and the other ovary was spared, a 50% conception rate was achieved and there were no fetal abnormalities reported. What are the possible complications of ovarian cancer? The answer time starts now. Most complications of borderline ovarian cancer are caused by the operation itself, subsequent therapy or recurrence. Patients should be followed up after surgery to ensure no recurrence. So this means that there are no complications of borderline ovarian cancer by itself except the complications that can happen because of the operation or because if the patient is given um, chemotherapy, then complications of chemotherapy, or if the tumor comes back, reoccurs, and if, got, if the, re the reoccurrence contains any kind of malignant tissue. So patients have to be followed up after the surgery to ensure no recurrence. With this, we come to the With this, we come to the end of the video. If you like the video, then please press the like button, subscribe, share with colleagues and friends, give your comments regarding the content, press the bell icon for notification of future videos. Thank you and goodbye.